A Merry Christmas! Everyone loves festivals. Let us read the story how Joe and her sisters wish to celebrate Christmas this year. Let us read. Joe was the first to wake in the grey dawn of Christmas morning. No stockings hung at the fireplace and for a moment she felt as much disappointed as she did long ago when her little sock fell down because it was crammed so full of goodies. Then she remembered her mother's promise and slipping her hand under her pillow drew out a little crimson covered book. She knew it very well for it was that beautiful old story of the best life ever lived and Joe felt that it was a true guidebook for any pilgrim going on a long journey. She woke Meg with a Merry Christmas and bade her see what was under her pillow. A green covered book appeared with the same picture inside and a few words written by their mother which made their one present very precious in their eyes. Presently, Beth and Amy woke to rummage and find their little books also, one dove-colored, the other blue, and all sat looking at and talking about them, while the east grew rosy with the coming day. In spite of her small vanities, Margaret had a sweet and pious nature which unconsciously influenced her sisters, especially Jo, who loved her very tenderly and obeyed her because her advice was so gently given. Girls, said Meg seriously, looking from the tumbled head beside her to the little two nightcapped ones in the room beyond. Mother wants us to read and love and mind these books. And we must begin at once. We used to be faithful about it. But since father went away and all this war trouble unsettled us, we have neglected many things. You can do as you please. But I shall keep my book on the table here and read a little every morning as soon as I wake. For I know it will do me good and help me through the day. Then she opened her new book and began to read. Jo put her arm around her and, leaning cheek to cheek, read also, with the quiet expression so seldom seen on her restless face. How good Meg is! Come, Annie, let's do as they do. I'll help you with the hard words and they'll explain little things if we don't understand. Whispered Beth, very much impressed by the pretty books and her sister's example. I am glad mine is blue, said Annie. And then the rooms were very still while the pages were softly turned and the winter sunshine crept in to touch the bright heads and serious faces with a Christmas greeting. Where is mother? asked Meg as she and Jo ran down to thank her for their gifts, half an hour later. Goodness only knows, some poor creature came a-begging, and your ma went straight off to see what was needed. There never was such a woman for giving away whittles and drink, clothes and firing, replied Hannah, who had lived with the family since Meg was born, and was considered by them all more as a friend than a servant. She will be back soon, I think, so fry your cakes and have everything ready, said Meg, looking over the presents which were collected in a basket and kept under the sofa, ready to be produced at the proper time. Why, where is Amy's bottle of cologne? She added, as the little flask did not appear. She took it out a minute ago and went off with it to put a ribbon on it. Or some such notion, replied Joe, dancing about the room to take the first stiffness of the new army slippers. How nice my handkerchiefs look, don't they? Hannah washed and ironed them for me, and I marked them all myself, said Beth, 
looking proudly at the somewhat uneven letters which had cost her such labor. Bless the child, she's gone and put mother on them instead of M. March. How funny! cried Joe, taking one up. Isn't that right? I thought it was better to do it so, because Meg's initials are M.M. and I don't want anyone to use these but Marmy, said Beth, looking troubled. It's all right, dear, and a very pretty idea, quite sensible too, for no one can ever mistake now. It will please her very much, I know, said Meg, with a frown for Joe and a smile for Beth. There is mother, hide the basket quick cried Joe, as a door slammed and steps sounded in the hall. Amy came in hastily and looked rather abashed when she saw her sisters all waiting for her. Where have you been and what are you hiding behind you? asked Meg, surprised to see by her hood and cloak that lazy Amy had been out so early. Don't laugh at me, Joe. I didn't mean anyone should know till the time came. I only meant to change the little bottle for a bygone, and I gave all my money to get it, and I'm truly trying not to be selfish any more. As she spoke, Amy showed the handsome flask, which replaced the cheap one, and looked so earnest and humble in her little effort to forget herself that Meg hugged her on the spot, and Joe pronounced her a trump, while Beth ran to the window and picked her finest rose to ornament the stately bottle. You see, I felt ashamed of my present after reading and talking about being good this morning. So I ran round the corner and changed it the minute I was up. And I am so glad, for mine is the handsomest now. Another bang of the street door sent the basket under the sofa, and the girls to the table, eager for breakfast. Merry Christmas, Marmy, many of them. Thank you for our books. We read some and mean to every day. They all cried in chorus. Merry Christmas, little daughters. I am glad you began at once and hope you will keep on. But I want to say one word before we sit down. Not far away from here lies a poor woman with a little newborn baby. Six children are huddled into one bed to keep from freezing, for they have no fire. There is nothing to eat over there. And the oldest boy came to tell me they were suffering hunger and cold. My girls, will you give them your breakfast, a Christmas present? They were all unusually hungry, having waited nearly an hour, and for a minute no one spoke. Only a minute, for Joe exclaimed impetuously, I am so glad you came before we began. May I go and help carry the things to the poor little children? Asked Beth eagerly. I shall take the cream and the muffins, said Annie, heroically giving up the article she most liked. Meg was already covering the buckwheats and piling the bread into one big plate. I thought you'd do it, said Mrs. March, smiling as if satisfied. You shall all go and help me, and when we come back, we will have bread and milk for breakfast, and make it up at dinner time. They were soon ready, and the procession set out. Fortunately, it was early, and they went through back streets, so few people saw them, and no one laughed at the queer party. <laughs>